Okay, so we're live. So I'm going to wait a few minutes because people do come on and then we're going to introduce you. This is Kalen. So we'll introduce Kalen, how I found him, um, and then we'll go from there. But I'm Patty Wilson. This is Patty's Playhouse. I'm a co host of a radio show here in Tallahassee, Florida. And we talk a lot about the murder of Dan Markell. And Kalen is probably not aware. But Dan Markell was a law professor here at Florida State. And I'm going to take my glasses off because they show blue. And he was murdered in 2014. He was shot between the eyes in his garage. Two shots, both in his head. And he was a father of two. It turns out, we didn't know. I live here in Tallahassee. And we didn't know what happened for a couple of years. We didn't know if it was a drive-by. We didn't know hate crime. We didn't know. We didn't know anything. Come to find out it was a family hit, uh, brother-in-law and two, uh, two thugs and a bad girl put a hit out on him and carried it out. Um, it took two trips to do the job, but they did it. And the poor man was shot for love and his kid. So the wife, Kaylin had, who's also a law professor at FSU, but not nearly as talented as Dan Markell. She got she got the job. It's kind of like gratis, kind of like we have him, so we'll pay her too. And she wanted to move back to Miami. And uh, the judge said, no, you're not taking his kids. And it, it went downhill from there. So the man's no longer here. It's taken 10 years to bring the mother-in-law in now. Uh, she was arrested last November, a uh, week after her son was convicted for life without parole. And Charles Adelson is the convict now, the inmate. He was here at Wakulla in the annex because he wanted protective management. So they approved protective management. He was at Wakulla. And then about two weeks ago, I think, they moved him to Columbia. So I don't know a lot about Columbia Correctional because my son never worked there. He worked at Wakulla and he worked like we talked about yesterday or the day before, I forget. He worked at Franklin and Wakulla Correctional. So I don't know. So I start Googling, Google Patty. I Google a lot and research a lot. And I found Kaylin's blog. And Kaylin's blog is part of Prison Journalism Project. And Kaylin is a very talented writer. I mean, you really are. You're clear, you. concise. The story is unfortunately very visual. So I read the majority of this blog. I'm going to um, let you speak and introduce yourself. But the other day when we did a live, I read most of it about the cheek and that kind of thing. So yes, introduce yourself, Kaylin. I'm so happy you were able to come on. Thank you, Patty. I appreciate you having me. And um, I'm very, um, I didn't, I'm very proud of my writing. Um, I've always been more in tune with linguistics and language and, and words, spelling, pronouns. It, it comes very natural to me. I just, I never employed it. Um, never had a reason to until my second bid in prison. Um, that was that was held at Graceville. And it recently, I was recently released um, last year, July 4th, Independence Day. Uh, you know, the DOC, if, it, if, it, if they're anything, it's ironic. So, um, but uh, my first bid was at Columbia and uh, I spent the majority of the time there at the annex. And then the, uh, the last, the very last full year at the main unit, which is actually called the pain unit. Um, it is the older version of Columbia's prison. And Columbia is um, known to be at least one of the most violent and um, roughest uh, prisons in Florida. So, and, Kayla, let me ask you a couple mm -hmm. questions first. How Please did you do. end up in the annex? Were you under protective management? No, ma'am, not at all. I was a gym pop, gen general population. Um, it just happened to be the place that ended up being my my permanent camp um was it prior, open bay or did you have your own cell no ma'am i was in an open bay i was in q2 and there it, the open bay buildings are referred to as t buildings because um 
the way they're the way they're set up is the officer's station is um you know super hard polyglass and it's set up in the middle of two two separate rooms and each room holds anywhere from 84 to 94 inmates um the middle portion are all single bunks for people who have back problems or can't crawl up on top the top bunks or anything like that and then all the walls are surrounded with um double bunks so they pack us in there like sardines um on, the yeah mm -hmm. yeah okay. um on that particular compound they have a t and an s dorm they're they're all 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 prisons basically have dorms that are named after army alphabet alpha beta kappa oh. you know delta yeah and i happen to be in q2 that's where i spent the majority of my time at the annex um i was in q2 uh while um getting my gd i was in q2 uh, i was fortunate enough anytime i went to the box they always sent me back to q2 this was not that was by chance they um if you go to the box you lose your spot wherever you're at and generally so move somewhere whoa, whoa, slow, yeah. slow, slow, slow. Mm -hmm. okay i have so many questions please so, do so Ask away. when you're in an open bay mm -hmm. where do you put your personal stuff do you are you allowed to have personal stuff yes ma'am but to a degree nothing's ever personal because they can take it away from you at any point no matter what it is okay. especially if it's considered contraband or they just call it contraband it could be something that you're you know allowed to have and they'll go oh no nope, no nope, sorry that you can't have that personal books um you know this was i i did this bid from 2010 to 2014 and uh my first year i was bounced around uh all over the state uh eight times uh in my first first year really and you yeah why? well um I was on psychiatric medication, okay, like uh, antidepressants. Uh -huh. Some camps are not psychiatric camps. Oh, okay. Um, so kind of getting, you go through reception centers, all right? And each reception center, the further you go north, um, I've never been to a southern reception center. Anytime I've been arrested, tried, convicted, and sent to prison, we always you know, down here in Hillsborough, we have two jails. We have Orient Road and Falkenberg. And one night, you know, after, 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 your tr after, whether you go to trial or you take a deal or whatever, one night, any, at any point, one thirty to four thirty in the morning, you'll, you'll receive a kick at the, the leg of your bunk and, uh, there'll be a sheriff's office saying, pack it up. Oh, really? You're going. Yes, ma'am. And, uh, we, desperately await for the bus to get onto i-75 if you turn south you're going to south bay reception and the southern prisons are known to be much more soft much more oh, really? yes ma'am much more much more much more um reserved the officers are are uh a little bit more carefree a little more lax and they and as a result they tend not to be as violent now if that bus turns north you're going up into central florida they or the don't panhandle tell you, right they no don't tell you. oh no you don't know see your first stop if you go to north if you go north you're going to um cfrc um and that is in orange county it's a reception center it's in orlando it's the main except it's the main like uh, uh reception yeah. center yeah Mm -hmm. And they put you your, through your processing with what we like to call the nuts and butts, where they um, they will strip you down butt naked. Doesn't matter if it's freezing cold or raining or whatever, but you always arrive early, early in the morning before before way before four. Um, so the bus rides about an hour and a half, plenty of time to think. And, um, you know, if you've never been to prison before, you think a lot. And when you get to CFRC, this camp is um, designed to put the fear, really put the fear in you. Um, the the guards there are incredibly um, intense. Is a good word. They're very intense, um, and they're they, they, they're trained to be. 
they're trying to they they're trying to break you before you have a chance to act out or so yeah. so when you're when they that give you specific I mean. yeah it does it does and um and it's happened both times i went to cfrc and went through the same process if you violate um the code of keep not keeping your hands behind your back during in intake and somebody catches you okay Wait. Mm -hmm. How long are you in intake that you have to keep your hands behind your back? This is a full day process. We're talking and from the moment. And your entire time, you're standing there with your hands behind your back? You're not cuffed yeah. or you are cuffed? We are cuffed initially. Okay. We we get off the bus. We are shackled and cuffed uh, in, to the front, to the front of our, um, to the front of our, our waist, basically, and okay. black box, right. depending. Thank you. And, um, and then once we once once we get off the bus one by one, they um, they unchain us and take all the shackles back to Hillsborough, and because that's where I came from, and we are stood in line and meant to strip out of our orange or whatever color PJs because that really that's what they are. They're just pullover tops and pants that have been worn thousands and thousands of times right. and you stand in the stand there naked and uh the guards go through there's a group of them and they're they a lot of them are you know very experienced they um we do body cavity search um you know lift your tongue lift your cheeks if they're real bastards they'll um they'll make you start from the bottom up you know lift up your testicles lift up your penis and then you know you you're green so you don't know then okay now take your finger and swipe it around your mouth and tongue after you've just had your hands on your junk yeah. for an hour and a half ride ha 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 it's real funny to them so a lot of the times we will have people who refuse to do that because they don't want to do that that's a bad idea because they 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 put hands on you there um, if they don't like, like I said, if you, inf if you break the infraction of, uh, moving, taking your hands behind your back, when you are upstanding, if you're okay, sitting so down, can I do this real quick. Of course. Well, I'm standing like this for yep. how long? Uh, oh Lord. Uh, uh, whenever you're standing, which you stand quite a bit, your arms must be behind your back. Um, so what if you have to scratch your nose? Like I'm sorry. What if you have to scratch your nose? Oh, you don't. Don't. You don't. Um, they consider, since there are nurses taking blood, there are um, basically civilians uh, in the building that any time that your, your arms are not behind your back, you pose a threat, which gives them wow. license to, to penalize you. And it's, it's also a scare tactic. And it's also a way to... To break you down because after intake takes anywhere from six to eight hours easy um and if you violate they will make you sit on your knees um not sit you know with your legs underneath you and then sit back sit uh, upright but on your knees for an extended period of time that could that could range a half an hour that could range three hours um, if you complain, oh, officer, um, I've got bad knees. I really can't do that. And they'll say, we got some for you. No problem. Get on your back and raise your legs and don't let them touch the ground until I come back. That can range from, you know, how, however long they want to do it really. And it's all meant to, it's all mental. It's all, so you're you know, driving. So you're driving to your next destination. Let's go to Columbia. So you get there okay. to Columbia. You had yep. you had no idea which facility you were going, right? Well, yeah, uh, I never did until and see, I they'll never tell you where your home camp will be. So every camp I arrived at, I'm like, okay, finally I can oh. get used to this and get regulated. And then when like two weeks since I was on psychiatric medication and some paperwork got flubbed i was sent to many camps that were not psych camps that's what okay. we refer to in kind of psych camps and it's not that they're full of crazy people it's just they are facilities that are equipped to um hand Medicaid, out because not every oh, place yeah. medicates right correct yes ma'am not every now every prison in, in florida is a has the capability to um 
you know, uh, give out psychiatric treatment or have uh, medicinal doctors that, you know, are mental health counselors or psychiatrists. Yeah. yeah. So, so you're on your way, and then what happens? You go to Columbia. I finally, you're make not it. In protective management. So, can I ask no, you this? In the yeah. annex, do they mm-hmm. have non-protective and protective, or is it the specific building you're in that determines well, where you are? PC is actually held at the main unit. Um, they have PC at the annex, but it's temporary. And it's basically indoor. Indoor is the box. That is uh, that is the belly of the beast. It's punishment. But for people who are in PC, they have, we have something called um, AC confinement and DC confinement. He's not AC. in either. He's not in either confinement. In Columbia? Okay. Yeah, he's at the annex, but he's protected management because he's very proud of him, his murder. So mm-hmm. he's in protective management because he called out the Latin Kings, if you recall. That's what I do. You told me that. And that was yeah, he blamed uh, the Latin Kings. So that's that why. is a, a major mistake on his part. <laughs> From what I've learned um, about gangs, which was quite a bit, um, the Latin Kings are probably one of the most A, respected and um, B, loyal. These, these guys um are actually quite trustworthy um if they give you their word that's a word they 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 pride themselves on that um i started noticing that regardless if you if uh if a spanish gentleman would come into the dorm brand new and he wouldn't they wouldn't know anything about him but any latin kings the latins would rush to this person and just you know, hey, how are you doing? What do you? I don't speak Spanish, but uh, you can see what's happening. Wow. They're shaking hands. How are you doing? Nice to meet you, man. Do, are you hungry? Here's some soups. Let me get you set up with some toilet paper. They automatically they they recognize a Latin, and they accept them immediately. And that's how they get their power, and that's why they have their power, and they they've earned it. Um, but a lot of compounds are not run by Latin kings at the time that I was in Columbia Annex, they were run by cutthroats and cutthroats are Haitians. It's a Haitian gang and they're, they earn their, they earn their name. They are very, very vicious. Um, so it was, they, the only, as far as the Latins are concerned, the only beef that you would ever see was between, between the Norteños and the Cervenos, the MS-14, the MS-13. And um, that was really the only beef that was ever, ever held um, on the compound, but nothing was ever really um, done. You know what I mean? They never went to war. I mean, yeah, they they never went to war. Um, When you make trouble, um, you get trouble. And the less trouble you get, the more business you can conduct. And business is, is a main priority. There, Patty, there are people in there making their millions. I mean, they're making, there are oh. <laughs> how yeah. uh, cellular phones rampant rampant i Internet read that in your blog what they use to what they call them how what is the what is the mm-hmm. slang name for those tiny little phones well we call them pipes 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 yeah we call them pipes um you know and um you know the finger phones are are big but it's gotten to the point. This last bit, everybody and their mom had a cell phone, a touchscreen, iPhones, lightning jacks. Pay the maintenance man to turn on your 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 outlet. Yeah, pay the maintenance man. One because maintenance, everything that's done in the camp is done by, you know, free labor, and that's inmates. So you pay a certain inmate who's got that capability and the tools to flip on a light switch uh, or an outlet that doesn't have power and you know you pay him enough or have him wired money through cash app or zelle or anything like that you can get anything done absolutely anything so So let me reintroduce you for a second mm -hmm. because there's more people on okay and this is kaylin kaylin came to me through his blog and the blog is it's not his blog but he wrote for the blog Prisonjournalismproject.org. He has several articles. And 
I was on the phone with him through Messenger and just complimenting. I mean, I sounded condescending when I was like, I kept saying, I don't want to sound condescending, but you're very smart. Thank you very much. It's not exactly what you would think for a two timer. I mean, yeah. you're very you think, smart. Yeah, you would think I'd get it well. first. I know people have been never gone to prison and can't write like you. So you're very, very, I mean, your storytelling is on top. Yeah, I get it. The subject How matter. Sure. Notes when you're in prison, or was it all through your memory? This was all through my yeah. Everything I wrote came from my head because I watched it. I mean, this is everything. Like you uh, at the beginning of the interview, you used a very good word. It's very visual. Um, you can't help but get these things that you've seen out of your head. They are forever memories. They 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 stick with you. And so were you in Open Bay? Okay, so Kalen told us he was at the annex. He told us how he gets there. He yeah, re man. he iterated what my son had said that no one knows where they're going. That it's quite you know what we would find. I was in the Air Force. Okay, so yeah. Air Force has nothing like what you went through. We mm -hmm. got yelled at for the first couple of days, but after that, it wasn't yelling. Yes, so and you moved around a lot, but you were at Columbia for about three and a half years. That ended up being my home my home camp. Uh, we call them camps or institutions, and you never know until you have spent a significant amount of time at a camp that that's your home camp. Well, um, after about four months, I realized I'm in trouble because uh, I haven't moved, and it does, it appears as if I'm not. And I already I already knew that this was a a very bad camp. Um, like I, I was telling you, I had got there two uh, weeks after a sergeant was almost beheaded by a um, an inmate uh, for moving his lover out of spite to another camp, having him transferred. Oh, wow. and, yes, ma'am. So uh, the compound once once I got there um, was already on edge. I mean. It was it was tense. It was really tense. They had just got off a of full compound lockdown, um, like two days prior to my entrance, and not you know you go into prison and you don't know, you don't know anything about it. So you're you're what we call greener than baby poop. Okay, that's not the preferred word I would use, but we're on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> greener than baby poop and soft as cotton. And um, you will be tested immediately. Um, there's really no way around it. It may happen the first day. It may happen months down the road. But eventually, yeah, you, you're going to get approached. And, you know, basically, they're sniffing you out. You know, this this particular camp is, is rampant. It's rampant with that. Whether they're gang recruiting, whether they're look, looking to extort um, sheer boredom, they will, you know, mess people up. For, you know, just, so just Charlie's up. there. Charlie, I told you, is a periodontist. Correct. Obviously, he'd never been to prison. He believed he was street smart. You know, he, he had a lot of people do his bidding that weren't always on the up and up. Yes, ma'am. Nothing it, like Columbia. It was Broward, Miami area. Okay, so they sent him directly up north. Yeah, he yeah. was up north because Tallahassee is where he was convicted. Ah. So he went out to the Northwest Reception Center. Yep. Then he yeah. went to McCullough because he was protected management. And now he's at Columbia, which is far worse Correct. than Wakulla. Do people get moved in this Florida prison system because they're celebrity? Um, yes, they do. And they will be put in PC, um, because of their, their fame, their proudness, or their loud mouth. Um, that will also get you in PC. You don't know Charlie, but he has, he has what I call it. The medical term. I was a nurse is called pressured talking. The man okay. cannot stop talking. Yep, at all. That, yeah. That is a, um, that's, that's, that's going to be a real issue for, for him. Uh, cause a lot of people don't, they're not, you know, they're not there to make friends. They don't, they don't, they don't care what you have to think or why you're in there or, you know, and if you talk too much and you get on somebody's nerves, it's considered disrespect. Disrespect is the biggest number one issue that will get you hurt in prison. And 
not knowing what is considered respectful it's a different world like entirely uh, uh familial and societal it's different um it's run the people people the way we interact the way we speak with each other the way uh you know if you don't if you're walking in a line and then there's another line coming your way and somebody is gracious enough to give you a head nod and you don't respond you may find yourself three days later facing this guy in the yard and he's he's gonna ask you hey man you want to tell me you want to tell me why you disrespected me like that huh and you better have a you better have a good reason you better be honest or you better bow right back up and when you when i say bow up that means i didn't just you know i didn't just respect you what do you want to do about it and chances are you're going to get in the, you're going to get in with you can get in it with him that's that's it and you will stake your claim and make your mark and get your name out there which is very important i did not know that until no, later. that was my question was did anyone warn you um no not until um it like i said i was i was at the annex for about four months and um you know just getting adjusted and um i i was getting i was getting um beaten up pretty bad for uh minor infractions that i didn't even know okay by whom, by whom? staff Rant. or no, no no never staff yeah, yeah i didn't start uh, uh i don't <laughs> Even in my criminal career out here, I don't run from cops. I don't disrespect them. I don't fight them ever. It's just, you make things incredibly hard on yourself. I brought that same mentality to uh, prison and gave the COs there the same respect because they will take you into a corner where there is no camera and put the boots to you nice and heavy. Yeah, um, I didn't want any part of that. I was getting, you know, hurt enough on my own so it was actually the um the ab the aryan brotherhood who approached me and said listen kid um and i wasn't a kid i'm what what you would call a late bloomer i didn't i didn't get i didn't start going to, you know getting into trouble until i was like 28. um but still they were like look you're making some you're making some bad decisions and uh where we've been watching and Here's what you need to do to correct yourself. And so they were gracious enough to put me like I was like I was telling you, put me under the wing. And when you're under the wing, you're 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 protected, but you're expected to still have your own back to stand up tall, to not put up with anything. But if it wasn't for them, I would, you know, the thing was. I was violent on the street, um, but I, I, I also had, you know, plenty of um, plenty of reasons for somebody not to resist what I wanted them to do. Sawed off shotgun, um, pistol, um, you know, mean mug. I mean, just basically put the fear into them to get what I wanted. But because and the Aryans helped you. Mm -hmm. Would any other group have helped you, or would it have to be a Caucasian group? Nope, 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 nope. I made a quite a bit of Latin Latin friends as well. Oh. You'll find uh, that in most camps, the Latins and the whites, um, they don't unify, but they've got each other's backs. They do. Um, and that is because the population is mostly black gangs. I think when I was in there, it was 69 or 70 percent black population statewide. Yes, ma'am. Um, so, so what is, are the bloods a port of there? Because I was reading about Columbia and they have bloods. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They have bloods, um, and that's that another is another gang. Yeah, that's that. That is a main black gang. But then you have you also have uh, gangs like the Gangster Disciples, Folk Nation. Uh, Crips, and they're all under the same color, even though they're sec they're separate segregated groups. They still fly the same flag, blue, blue. Okay. That's their colors. And um, would they get so, mad because of the color use that someone used the color? Okay. Oh, if you're not affiliated, yes, you, that is a that's a that is a a bad bad move. Really? It's called, yeah, it's called false claiming. You don't you don't false claim. You have to know, like, uh, 
if if you claim yourself a crip there's a series of questions that they will ask you and if you don't have the right answers they know you're false claiming and they will beat you to the ground it's okay so good. one one second because you mm -hmm. are you are extremely fascinating mm -hmm. but i want to reintroduce you because we keep adding numbers so this is yeah, kaylin Whitten, and he was an inmate um he's out now and has been out for about a year an mm -hmm. inmate with at columbia he did a variety because they moved him around for his own medical reasons so they moved him around and he did three and a half years i found him on the prison journalism project which i did share in the message so i'm gonna share some of your blogs and then when the show is over and i write the show notes i'm gonna add it there as well and Please. I think it's really important. I think it's important information regardless of Charlie Adelson. I don't, mm -hmm. I think you can tell from the previous um, shows we've done that people expect people to behave the same on the inside as they do on the outside. But if they behave the same on the outside as they did on the inside, it wouldn't be on the inside. Correct. And also it is a horrible decision to go in with that kind of mentality that you had on the street, this, and from what I'm gathering about this gentleman, he thinks he's the cock of the walk. And he did, you know, for sure. How will yeah. he survive? He has money. He just sold a home. So well, how will he survive? If he's in PC, chances are he's on the he's in the main unit. And uh there he's is an annex for the the website. Right. Okay. Well, if that means he's chances are he is not in uh PC currently. He is in Gen Pop. If he does decide to go to PC, he'll probably likely be moved to now. Keep in mind, this is 2010, 2014. Yeah. May have arranged uh, rearranged dorm numbers. It or, since then. Okay, so like when I was uh, when I was at Columbia, the last year, the PC unit was segregated um, outside of the main compound in its own little caged area, and it um, held child molesters, uh, people who were in danger, and a lot of uh, transsexuals, um, you know, just because they felt they didn't feel safe on the compound. From what uh, I was told, it's like Wakulla. Wakulla has um, people undergoing sex changes or correct. because you have to be who you are in the Florida prison. If you're born a female, you're in a female prison. You're not in the opposite way. But they have transvestites in one and mm -hmm. then the PC in the other. And since okay. that your time, that is true, it has changed. PC uh, yeah. is in the annex because they okay. wanted to consolidate them. Okay, he may, he may, be. at the time um, that last year, I was being moved, uh, as, I, as I told you, because they were changing the annex to a more of a disability camp because of all the open bay dorms there. So, um, that that's why, sense. yeah, everybody that was able-bodied was, would, we, we were moved to the pain unit and they started shipping in from other camps, people in wheelchairs and crutches and, and walkers, older gentlemen, they had a vet dorm, if I'm not mistaken, a veterans dorm. And, uh, we all went yeah. to the main. That's yeah. what I was told. The vets were a different place. So yeah. people have questions. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So Charlie is Jewish. He wasn't a true practice. I mean, it was very cultural. Okay. He didn't keep kosher or anything like that. Yeah, How will be Jewish yeah. and white affect his time there? And he's life without parole. Okay. Um, well, he most likely, unless he starts attending Jewish services when they're held, um, they'll never know uh, unless some other inmate is aware of the case um knows his background knows you know and like the likelihood is somebody's got to okay and um the thing is like unless you know like i said no troubles no bubbles if you don't make waves in the pond you're not going to get thrown overboard so um as far as like him worrying about the an the aryan nation or the ab it's really there it's it's no concern i think four percent at the time i was in there four percent of the state population in prison was uh jewish just four oh, okay. percent so, so what, what about the extortion side of it to keep okay. himself alive and fit 
that is a very that's a very good possibility for him um he can pay to be put under the wing um depending uh it, it depends on Who's wing though who's wing well it depends who who likes money you know he All can go to, yeah exactly he can go to the bloods and be put on oh, the really? wing yeah he can go he can even go to the ab and say listen i'll pay you such and such now chances are he's not going to get the reception that he he expects they'll probably tell him to kick rocks with open told sandals really or you know you got some nerd bubba coming up to us of all people asking for protection get out of our face basically and it i can honestly say it won't be that uh that pleasant of a, a you know just get out of your face but he can go to kings he can go to like I like I like I was saying earlier, the cutthroats, uh, you know, and basically be charged a weekly, monthly fee that would be sent. This would this would have to be either paid in canteen or and in actual cash money. If they find out that he is financially well off, he is they upcharge the living out of it. So what's the average? For protection, I mean, no, I'm a big white girl who looks mm -hmm. like can't be. What do I need? If you go in, if you were to go into a female prison, you would have to find you would be somebody's Jody, okay? And a Jody is uh, somebody that will basically live off of you and your funds in exchange for you know keeping an eye out on you, um, you know, but you're gonna you're gonna work for it, you're gonna make beds. You're gonna make their bed you're going to clean their cell you're gonna make sure they're ready for inspection um and then on top of that you are going how much to do i pay that's that's that varies it really does but if they know you have a lot of money they're gonna go for your whole you know they're gonna go for your they're gonna, they're gonna go deep it could be like a thousand is it it could be a thousand a month yeah it could be 500 a month it could be look man two, give me 200 a week give me 100 a week it depends it depends on how how good a talker he is and it in prison that's not exactly the kind of thing you want to bargain about you know what i mean if you want protection and they give you a quote and you want to try to you know juke them down a little bit they're going to take it as disrespect because you came how to them it, how long did it take you to quote fit in unquote oh me um uh, uh well once the ab got a hold of me and uh I'm not patched in, I'm not affiliated, but I am, uh, you know, an associate. Uh, I'm an associate. Uh, I'm an associate with most of the white supremacist gangs that on any camp, on any compound. Um, I, I do have a, a, a swastika on my back. I have my bolts that I've earned. They are um, hollow. What's a bolt? Mm-hmm. Uh, like a crack. lightning bolt? Yeah, the SS uh, insignia, can you see that? Oh yeah, I didn't know what that was. Yes, ma'am. They call them cracker bolts. Um, you earn them. Uh, if they're hollow, you're you're basically just you're an associate. You're not affiliated. You're not linked to any particular. I have a lot mm -hmm. of questions about this tattoo. Did they do it in prison? I got most of my tattoos in prison. You know. And what do they use? Well, oh man, what don't they use? Um, when I was in, they had taken out shaving razors, you know, like Bix or the Lady yeah. Bix single blade razors, because you know people were turning them into knives very easily. Um, so they took those out and they gave us electric clippers, like little microfoil shaver clippers. Well, you all we need is the motor. We just need the motor. Um, we can use a. Um, what, what we, they normally use is um, lighter springs. And what we will do is create a candle out of um, hair, hair uh, like uh, the um, African-American gentleman, they use hair grease. Or we will get lard from the kitchen and we will twist up toilet paper and make a candle. And they heat that wire up and stretch it out. And then use sandpaper for maintenance to get it, you know, nice and pointy, as pointy as possible oh without, God. without any burrs. That, and that is a very, to, to find an experienced tattoo man who could A, make his own ink, B, make a needle 
that is sufficient enough to push that ink in and get through the skin without catching or creating burrs because it makes it a lot more painful and actually create the artwork himself is you know you sit around when you decide to get a prison tattoo because there's a lot of people who run and you look and you go who did that you know oh man i like that piece who did that you know and you start getting names and then you approach them and you say listen i'm i'm interested in getting some pieces done and you just talk to them they give you a price and you run and you run until it's done because you don't have time to sit there and have like okay we'll do two hours this session and then we'll then tomorrow we'll do an hour and no there's no we have no clue when there's a shakedown we have no clue when they're going to walk through and do a security check they can kick in the door at any moment and there you are with a half finished tattoo and the original person may not be around or you go to the box and you know you get moved to a different dorm and you have an incomplete tattoo that is not you know if somebody else takes it over it may not have the same feel or uniform or or the the line weight may be different and so you you when when we get tattoos especially if they're big um they 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 generally we run and we run and we run and we run and when you get a tattoo in prison if it's a big piece you pay a spook you pay somebody to basically watch the officers oh, yeah. Yeah, watch the officers. See if anybody's coming down the sidewalk in threes, fours, five, six, and which point they'll yell uh, two times coming in, three times coming in. Oh, you know, and anything more than that, shake down, shake down, shake down. We all, you know, we start putting things away. And it's funny, the, the, the swastika on my back is about the size of a dinner plate. And uh, I went in for that. And it, yeah, it was halfway done. I was halfway done and uh, I spent 30 days in there for getting a tattoo and they put me right back into Q2 where Creature, the gentleman who was doing the tattoo in the first place, was. So we just picked up right left off and finished it. Yeah, knocked it off. Took about three days. Yes, so question from the audience. Neely okay. is asking, Kaylin, how are you adjusting to being out of prison? Um, the first time it was bad. The first time, um, it was, it was, it was really, I got car sick on the way home cause I hadn't been in a vehicle in so long. Yeah, um, was, yeah finding a job was, uh, next to impossible. My, my, um, my record's ugly. It's very ugly and got uglier during, you know, for the second bit. But, um, yeah, it, it, it it, it, it was all a mental game. And uh, luckily, I uh, before I went in, I had a, uh, a psychiatrist that I had found that uh, he really made a big difference. Unfortunately, I didn't find him in time. Mm -hmm. So um, even though I was leveling out, um, it's, it's like I was explaining to you. I had been so successful in my criminal career for so long that... I okie doke myself. I thought this, you know, I, I, I explained to you the A to B syndrome or the A to Z, what I call the A to Z syndrome, where I would get an idea, you know, I knew where there would be a significant amount of money and I would go from A to Z and never think about, you know, things that I most assuredly should have thought about as taking into consideration for my safety, for their safety. But when you don't care, you don't care. So A to Z, boom. And that worked for four years before I was ever caught. And once I was caught, I hit, I hit that, like I told you, that brick wall that's been there the whole time. I just never took the time to see it. And I hit it hard. And I hit now, it Now really someone's hired you. You have a regular J-O-B. Yes, ma'am. Well, you up. have the writing. Have you ever thought about writing a book? I, I have. I've, I've written about... Um, my first bid uh, through Columbia, um, uh, it, it still needs the ending, which is maybe, it's just basically the last four months of, well, actually the last two months of Columbia. And it's not very, um, not much happened during the last two months, but it was- How a, do you measure time when you're in there? You In your blog, you said there is I no clock. Yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't measure time. You don't think about it. 
if you want to know the day, ask somebody and then everybody will go. Um, okay, we had fish patty on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, because the schedule, the, the the menu schedule doesn't change. You have the same thing on the same day every single week. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong, each week changes. It, they just move dishes around. So that's kind of our calendar. It's mm -hmm. like crap are we eating tonight because it's bad and it always has raw cabbage we saw that we've read uh one of the menus and kosher or what, what you know one is culturally appropriate uh, is peanut yeah. butter beans and cabbage it's tough mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there's no seconds did you ever have did someone say i want your food and you have to give up your food no no there's too many people selling their trays selling like their trays Selling their trays, like uh, if it's chicken day, you know, which it's it's not really. I I think it's more pigeon than chicken because uh, I've never seen a, a a leg quarter so small in my life. Um, but gentlemen will buy just that, just the chicken, just the main, and um, they they will buy that for two soups, you know, and and instead the gentleman, you know, the gentleman will be paid in soups, and a lot of people what they'll do. And this is very smart, but it takes a while. They will accrue by selling their food if they don't get any money sent to them. They will accrue through selling trays or turning down beds, making sure inspection ready, cleaning cleaning cells, doing um, laundry is a huge hustle. Sewing is another huge hustle. Knife making, huge hustle. Well, he's um, a dentist. So what could he do that way? Uh, what could he do? Well, well if he's he got, sew, cause he can do stitches. Okay. Well, yeah. He, he can sew. Now he seems to be a prideful gentleman. I don't, think, uh, I don't see him doing that. I see him paying people to have things done for him. Um, I you can would. get I had the money. I yeah, do it and... now if I had the money. Yeah. I think, <laughs> I think everybody would most definitely, especially if we're talking about, um, the money that his family is 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 known to have on the street perry donald you know dentistry and and uh, you know and just the stereotypical jewish family you know there's all i mean there's so many jokes out there about jews and money it's and they're they're hilarious but i mean you know pc culture you can't you can't tell them anymore that's so Sucks. were you shocked because you came out, let's say the first time you came out out of Columbia and then mm -hmm. the, were you in during COVID? You were in during COVID, right? Your... For my second bid. Yes, ma'am. For the second and then bid. When you got out and everything became so politically correct and very oh, odd wow. to those of us who are born in the sixties <laughs> to now, how did you adapt to that? It was that was the toughest thing is coming out and seeing that my town down here at, is well, I mean just <sighs> housing developments and solar panels and buildings that I grew up with and businesses that I went and frequented and places that I my 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 myself and my tribe hung out are gone. It's not the same down here at all. Well, um, my my best friend lives in Clearwater, and it's not. Okay, yes, ma'am. He's yes, in Tampa. He doesn't need to say where he's from. So everyone's asking about your earrings. Yes, ma'am. I had those. Oh, uh, they're not earrings. Yeah. The, oh, these are just gauges. Uh, the acrylic gauges. plastic. Yeah, gauges. Uh, oh, they're uh, plastic. Uh, yeah, acrylic plastic. Uh, okay. uh, semi hollow, very light. Believe it or not, they look heavy. But these are inch and a quarter, almost. Yeah, no, an inch and a quarter. I got it. I got. Everybody has a good ear and a right ear when they gauge, mm -hmm. and one ear will stretch very easily. The other one will always give you problems. And it's from, and this last one, when I got out and I started stretching, I had to reweight them because when you gauge ears, uh, you generally start with taper pins. You'll get like say a regular piercing like a classic piercing with the gun mm -hmm. right? which at which actually is not a hole it's the spreading of the flesh there's no hole made um and that's why they have a tendency to close up unless oh, you're wearing okay. it for years and years and years and years well you'll have that little 22 gauge hole and they'll start with taper pins and they will lube them up 
I, I pierced for three years um, on the street before I started getting in any oh, trouble right. back back in the 90s. So, um, uh, and you gradually. How old are you? How old are you, Kaylin? I'm 43. Mm -hmm. 43 this past January, January 30th. Yep. So I fart dust and uh, my knee hurts and I don't know why. And right. So yep. someone's asking a question, but I don't understand the question. Maybe you will. Okay. Does Kaylin think Charlie will be S.A.? What is S.A.? Um, I've never heard that term. And this girl can tell me what S.A. means because I don't Please. know. That would be is nice. Is there a limit to how much you can put in your prison fund, your count, your campaign? Correct. Yes, there how is a uh, $100. Well, you can put in as much as you want. People can have thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on, on their books, but they are only allowed to spend $100 a week. That's oh, it. That's it. That's it, $100 a week. And the last thing this gentleman wants to do is go to the canteen and pop his entire wad and then walk back into the dorm with a big bag of food. Because that's like walking through a lion's den with, uh, you know, I'll a just bloody, take it. Yeah, a bloody carcass over your shoulder, especially if you're green. If so, and no, nobody knows you, nobody cares about you, you're not established. Yeah. Andy's yeah. asking you, does Kalen have any contacts at the prison? Kalen is probably not allowed to talk to anybody in the prison. Um, even if I did or did not, I, I may or may not. I'm going to go ahead and say I do not have any contacts in prison whatsoever. Um, Kalen's there, still on probation. Yes, ma'am. Correct. I am still on probation. I've got 10 years. I can early <laughs> term five. And I do not associate with criminals. Good for you. Yep. Yes, ma'am. It's, uh, you know, Kalen is smart. Kalen is so smart. You got to read his articles. I mean, that shows you yeah. just Please do. what a talent you are. And I'm not well, blowing smoke. Like I am really impressed. Yeah, it blew me away that you, you, you found me on Twitter and, uh, I've never, I've never been on Twitter. Um, I I, saw like your, I, no, no, no. I found you on Facebook. Okay. Um, yeah, you have a couple profiles. So I just right. picked. And hoped you would come on. Yeah. Well, you got the right one, I guess. <laughs> uh, but as far as, uh, uh, well, uh, you had mentioned you Twitter and uh, my boss and myself yeah. uh, yesterday. And he punched my name into Twitter. And he's like, dude, you're all over here. And I said, oh, what? are you? I, maybe I did because yeah, yeah. My, I have short-term memory issues, Kalen, for sure. <laughs> but I do so much research so fast. If Welcome I don't on. take notes, I won't know where I found you. Correct. I'm a, I'm an avid note taker as well. Um, uh, especially being in school, um, I'm very OCD. Functionally, though, um, I don't wash my hands for five hours until they bleed. I don't check my door lock. You know, every you know, for you know, sixteen hours straight, going back and forth. It's nothing like that. I'm um I'm a clean freak. I have a thing where um everything in my house has to be like horizontal or parallel. Uh, I can't have things askew. It drives me absolutely mad uh, if things aren't uniform. And I think a lot of that developed in prison because your your room must be kept in a certain way. And the store you had asked about the storage, we have lockers. Um, some of them are attached to the bottom. If, if you live on a um, if if you sleep on a, uh, a bunk bed, both lockers are attached and welded to the bottom of the bottom bunk and oh. you get one locker and one, and the one on top gets the other and it's not a lot of space it's not so you have to really organize your locker to accommodate what you have and the more time you spend in prison the more things you will gather whether you need them or not but since you don't have a lot you have they have a tendency to pack rat you know what i mean oh yeah. man i just paper clip that I found on the ground uh, uh, sometime, you know, so you know, they'll hoard things. And when people come in for shakedowns, that's the stuff they look for is, you know, random crap that they, you know, were not supposed to have. And, um, you know, any paraphernalia, tattoo ink um, is, is a big one. We hate losing that because it takes a lot of work to make that. Um, and uh, losing a bottle of it is, it's like losing a child because um, they uh, the way they make it is they um, they 
they basically turn a can they, they make a candle and they put it in their locker and they let the soot uh the blackness the black smoke oh my God. Collect, collect on the top of the locker it's best to use the, the pull out lockers that that are actual boxes that you can mm -hmm. put a lock um and you know instead of the ones that you have to pull out of the drawer because, but either way, it stinks up the entire dorm. So these officers who come through and do security checks, they know what, you know, burnt hair grease or do burnt. Do they pick their battles that way? Most definitely. Mm -hmm. What's if it's really not that important? If the COs, COs really don't care if we're giving each other tattoos. They really don't. But if the captain's on deck or somebody who is really like the colonel, if the if if the warden's there, tighten up. Nobody's doing anything that day. No running, no games, no you know poker is limited. A uh, lot of gambling in prison. Uh, they because the warden on the compound, he'll make something happen, and it's generally. So how much it's, time did you get outside? That's always been a question here. Okay, well, um, in Colombia. Uh, we had wreck regularly quite a bit. Um, but, uh, you know, in Florida, the, um, the annex, uh, was split into quadrants. It was four quads. So R dorm and S dorm would have wreck on their quad and caddy corner would be P dorm and Q dorm, which is, you know, directly across that way. And then we had center gate in the middle. Um, they did this diagonal wreck time to where we couldn't fly kites uh, through the through the fence. And if, you, if people don't know what kites are, kites are messages that we don't we would rather not the CO know um, because it generally is business or you know hits things that have to get done to have things get done, and they're jotted down. Sometimes they're in code. Most of the time they're not, they're in plain English, but they are um, wrapped and taped in a certain fashion and given to a certain person. And they are aware of how it is wrapped and taped. And if it's been opened and read, who delivered it and who's responsible for reading the information that was not meant for them. So, um, yeah, that's a, that's a, but it's important because, uh, getting messages like that say you don't have a cell phone and you know that's that's a, that's a that's a way we communicate we also sign we also use american sign language uh, oh, do you really yes ma'am but but it's just the alphabet and there are gentlemen in there that can sign like lightning and there are gentlemen in there that can read it like lightning it is so fast you cannot i mean it's it's amazing it would make a deaf person go wow you just said a whole lot in a little amount of time with one hand spelling it out word for word like a letter for letter is amazing amazing i i can do it but go not ahead. i wanted to see go ahead you, you know can you, got, you, can't. you got a b c d e you know e f g i mean and so you'll get out on the glass and you're talking to somebody across the, the quad and you can get messages out like that too. Oh. You know, they can see you and they can see your signing and you'll, you can talk back and forth. Here's the problem. The COs have been taking ASL classes as well. Oh, and they secretly read our notes, like, you know, our, our messages. So, so they know something's have, coming up. Correct. Um, most like a lot of them don't remember. The, you know, like it was a, you know, a couple courses that the DOC is like, oh, we we think it'll be beneficial if you guys learn the alphabet of the uh, uh, a a a a ASL so you guys can interpret what's being uh, said and under underneath the, the criminal's radar, underneath the inmate's radar. So uh, and never let on that you, they forget it. They forgot it like after, you know, three, four sessions and. But there are some out there that still do. So we got to watch even when we sign. And that's a, that's a lot of the reason why these guys sign so fast. Because, I mean, great. You took, you know, four weeks of ASL sign language learning the alphabet. And these You're guys are. It. 
no way. And these guys are going 100 mile an hour. Was that an S weight? No F. No Q. Oh, wait. I'm gone. I lost it. Lost the whole message. It, so I've it. learned a new term. SA means SA. sexual assault. Oh, ah. Uh, Will he the, be assaulted it, in any way? Violated anally? Okay. Um, my both of my bids, I've only known of one rape, and I didn't see it, but I heard it, and it was nightmarish. Wow. Um, it was one of the. It was the same stint that I did in the box where with the gentleman who uh, unfortunately lost half his face. Um, but it was the same stint and they had put a, um, a young white kid in with a, a black gentleman and they had, apparently the black gentleman had a stick of spice K2 um, and, uh, and shared it with him. Well, nothing's for free in prison. That's not necessarily true. If you have, I wouldn't call them friends, but associates, acquaintances, and you walk up to them and be like, you know, you go, I go to one of my associates and say, listen, man, I'm hungry. Yeah, man, here's the soup. No problem. Gotcha. Don't worry about it. They're not going to come looking for, you know, a 69 cent ramen noodle soup, but drugs are another thing. You know, so if somebody smokes, you know, smokes a stick with you, that's what they call it, a, a stick of spice. And white boy, poor guy, he didn't, he didn't think he would, he thought he was just being friendly. He was not just being friendly. He was being real friendly. And so once he got him high and he was severely high, he basically bounced on him and raped him. And, um, the guy was on the door. Uh, the, the, the black gentleman after the act was done passed out because that, that is a very typical reaction. Because a lot of the times it's not spice; it's actually like raid, spider spray. It's neurotoxins. It's you know they're smoking, and it's a you'd be, Patty, you'd be so surprised at the the amount that it takes to get like three or four people just absolutely annihilated. Tiny, tiny. We have such a problem with that at Columbia. I mean, yes, it's a huge problem there. Yes, ma'am. Um, that's why at Graceville, this most recent bid, when I had seven years in between, that all the all the shot callers and all the headhunters got together, uh, went to the library one day to check out books, had a little you know, convene and said, "Listen, everybody, stop. No more spice. We all agree. We're at, we're, there's too much too much heat. The money's great." We, we, and that's why they, you know, they stop spice on our compound. Anything else, anything else you wanted to get at Graceville, it was there and it was there in a lot and in vast amounts. Spice slowly but surely started trickling out because anybody who was caught selling spice was reprimanded by the cons, by the convicts. This, this was instituted, this was convict policy, not CO policy. And we, I don't we, know if you can see this question. This gal is in Scotland and she says, yeah. how do we, how did you cope with the silence when you came out? You sat on your own bed and not hearing all that clamoring and noise around you. It must've been strange. It was very weird. Um, <laughs> that's, a, that's a really good question. Um, my first bit, I found myself waking up for count time and sitting up in my bed, waiting for a CO to come count. What's when... that mean? What's that mean? I'm sorry. Okay, well, um, count times, they have, let's see, generally like five, five count times, where count time, everybody get on their bed, sit down, and shut up. Officers are coming by, they're doing a head count to make sure everybody is still present on the compound. These happen, it generally happens at certain times, you know, 4.30, 10.30, before bed, you know, um, seven o'clock. Uh, now, when we're asleep, it's, it's, it's night, you know, and because breakfast is at 4.30, okay, that's, a, that's our breakfast, four to 4.30, and they feed the compound. Then we go back to bed. They'll have a count at like 7.30, we'll still be asleep. But by eight, our beds are supposed to be made, you know, Everything's supposed to be more, and we're off to do maintenance or, or if you have a, have a job in the kitchen or if you work in the library, I was, uh, um, I was doing, I got my GED at Columbia and then, um, 
my uh, teacher, Mr. Bonds, he said, um, he pulled me in the office. He said, uh, great. Uh, I've got some really good news. Um, you scored the highest GED score in Columbia history. And I said, oh. what? Yeah. And he said, yeah, not just Columbia history, Columbia County. I said, the, wait, the entire county It's a small county. And it's also, if you know, if you, if you met anybody from like Columbia County, it's like telling me, congratulations, you're the smartest kid with Down syndrome. No, it's not. <laughs> no, I mean, it really is. I mean, the, 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 City, that's not true. The, the CEOs there, rural, they are. Though. It is definitely rural. Yeah. They are podunk as you can. I mean, podunk as I'll get out. You, you are do? smart. I mean, you don't dangle prepositions. Like, you're very smart. Mm, thank you. You have TVs mm -hmm. in prison. Do they have TVs? Mm -hmm. In Columbia, we had uh, one TV in the day room. It was a, it was split in their benches. Their benches with no back. So, so if you're watching a significant amount of TV, you're also in pain the whole time because these, they're wooden benches oh. and there's no back to them. So you're, you're sitting straight up and it's just, you know, regular TV. Now, Graceville was a different story because um, it was a private the difference camp. that Graceville was a private prison? Okay. Um, a lot of companies, uh, a lot of businesses have been, especially in Florida, because we are a Florida, I mean, Florida is a prison state. They make a lot of money in the prison system, which is why a lot of people get sentenced to a lot of time. Like, I, I don't know the respective figure of what the federal government pays Florida per inmate. I've heard rumors that it's 400 to 300, 300 to 400 dollars a day. But to actually take care of us, medical, food, housing, clothes, it actually it it amounts to about 39 cents for one inmate. But federally, you know, they're getting they're getting thanked. Um, well, apparently after sometime after Rick Scott um, or during Rick Scott, they started having major issues finding COs for employment. Um, they had to start shutting down prisons. And the remedy to that was these big corporations coming in going, listen, we'll fund it. We'll fund it. But, you know, it's time for you to pay us back. So, you know, we'll 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 make a deal and that's the deal private prison works with with florida's state and um they will actually pay florida to take over prison and run it according to doc law and doc you know um uh, regimen but they are much more financially they're fiscally able to provide programs a lot more uh, reform acts uh, at Graceville. There was horticulture, GED, Ashland University. They had a dog program, a dog training program, where they would teach dogs how to smell for explosives. And they'd had the inmates take care of them and teach them how to do this. It's a program through Auburn. And uh, we had a lot of opportunities there. And that is the biggest difference between a regular DOC camp in a private prison is there are much there are many more opportunities to actually do something so the media, the media the media is very hard on private prisons oh yeah most definitely they most act definitely. like they're the yeah, worst they, like the concentration camps hmm. not necessarily true um if you were to ask me what are the three worst prisons in Florida, they are all they are all either well, Columbia, I would give the number one, uh, but mm -hmm. that would be contended by a lot of other convicts. They feel that Century and Gulf, which are also in the Panhandle, um, are 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 up there when it comes to um, inflicting pain and giving you the roughest sins possible. Um, did you have air for conditioning? Kalen, someone was asking, um, did you have air yes, conditioning? Okay. At the Annex, mo most prisons that you will go to do not have air conditioning. And it's bad. 
um, and the COs, the correctional officers um, during midsummer are required to stick a little laser uh, measuring gun outside of their air conditioned window and take the central room temperature, which always registered around 119, 120. And uh, all we had was fans if they if they worked uh, and then windows if they opened. Um, so but uh, at Columbia Annex, uh, the you know, the open bay dorms where I see and I do believe the um, the uh, the two man cells, the S and T uh, were also air, con air conditioned. The pain unit was not. And it was, well, it was very old. It was very, very bad. It's very old. Very old. Same with CFRC, the reception, reception, reception center in Orlando. They have the East unit and the West unit. The East unit is it's night and day. It's so weird. Um, also, does both of them do not have AC? It was built in 1988. Um, the walls are literally falling off the walls on the outside of the building. It's amazing. Um, they put a. Don't worry though. They painted it. Uh, so they're yeah it's yellow but uh you know it's falling off so it doesn't look any better uh that was the only only thing i noticed when i went through the second time um but uh yeah it's hot <laughs> and in the winter it's cold and the in the room that i was in um during my my uh, my my uh second bid uh actually had a major hole through the screen because it was a screen with, you know, and then bars that you couldn't get through. And one day, my my uh, myself and my roommate Anthony were make, making a brick, and a brick is ramen noodles and, and and you know other ingredients and stuff. And you add just the right amount of water, and then you put it in a cereal bag, you know, that you bought from canteen, and you ate the cereal, or any bag that you can basically fold and keep the contents in, and you put it under your mattress. And you let it lock up and it locks up into a brick. And when it slides out, you cut it in half. They have half. We have half. We had a friggin' dove fly in and try to eat our brick. And then it had trouble getting out of the actual room because the, the way the hole was, it was punched in, not out. So he came in no problem. But when coming out, he was out. encountering all the little spiky yeah, I couldn't get out, so he took a crap on my roommate's pillow, and then finally had, you know, finally made his way out, and uh, but not without nibbling my side of the brick. So, can you, turd you bird. get more than one pillow? Can you get one more than one pillow? Uh, I wouldn't even consider the pillow they give us a pillow. Um, it's uh, it might be a might be an in. It's made out of. Uh, some sort of flame retardant fabric that is not known to man. I don't know where they've been, you know, what are they realm thin? or are they universe they found thin? this. Are they? They are thin? very. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you. The, I'll give you a visual if you want to know what a pillow in prison looks like. Yeah, it's uh, it's about that thick. There, there. About, about the size thin. of my mat. Probably. Yeah, that's actually a little bit more comfortable uh, than the pillow. And then you get a sheet, you get a bed sheet that doesn't fit, um, you know, a fitted sheet that doesn't fit. And then you get a sheet and then you get um, a gray blanket that if you take the time to look at, it has Christmas tinsel, um, pieces of wire woven into it. I, this is no lie. Um, uh, uh, fishing string. Really? When, I, when they say 100%, yeah, when they say 100% recyclable, they're not kidding. I found styrofoam in it. Um, it's a wild blanket. I mean, I would, I would love, to, I would have loved to be able to take one out and just, you know, show people. Look, look, this is from, this is from. We lost. You. Oh, there you uh, go. We lost. It's amazing. Minute. Amazing. So in, so in the open bay, in I don't the know, open bay, but the bedding's cheap. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Can you hear me, Kalen? Okay. In the open bay, is it as loud as yeah. I think it is in the open bays? Yes. Like, what is the noise level Correct. in an open mm -hmm. bay? Um. Uh, okay. Well, when, when everybody is up and doing their thing, uh, let's see. What, what do they say? A jet plane's around 90 decibels. Yeah. We'll go about that. 
it's a, it's a, it's a nice dull roar. It'll leave you with tendonitis. Yeah. When you're sleeping, I'm, your, your ears. Are... I'm a person who loves silence. I love silence. Uh -huh. I yes, enjoy it very much. I work by myself all day and I like it. How do you That's deal a, with uh, that? How do you deal with it? Well, you live in your head. You live in your head. You'll be amazed what you can teach your mind to do when you don't want to go insane. And that brought me to the question, uh, the, the question you posed, you know, or the, the question I posed to you, which was um, when people often ask me, which bid would you consider the, the harder bid? Which one was the worst? Hold on one second, if you would, I will, I'll go turn on a light. Um, and uh, the answer to that is really very, very hard to consider because I have to incorporate so many different factors. Um, my first bid was all learning. It was a learning experience and it was painful. Um, but uh, thanks to the AB, they, they pointed, they gave me some very juicy pointers on how to take care of people who are attempting to hurt you, um, how to fight um, in prison. Uh, as I was telling you, 95% of your fights are going to the ground. You're going to go to the ground. And if you can't fight on your back or you don't know how to wrestle, you're going to get, you're going to get beaten a lot. Um, wow. So I had some specific brothers take, you know, give me some pointers and tell me how to, how to handle myself. And that coupled with getting tired of being beaten like literally just having the, just, just the tar whooped out of me. Um, I began to realize how to do it myself. And towards the end of my bid was actually, uh, it got to a point where nobody wanted to fight me because after a while they would recognize that two, you know, that, that, well, I mean, I need more than one guy to handle him. So they would stick two on me and I was able to take two down and they're like, all right, well, man nobody wants to beat him nobody wants to nobody wants to get him because um i had to tap into that that violent side that i had on the street that i was trying to lose legitimately i was trying to i was trying to reform myself because i let my mom down i let i let everybody in my family down and it, 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 it that crushed me that that really crushed me so i was trying my best not to be that that monster that I was on the street and uh, on the street is totally different. I mean, I can whoop an ass in a heartbeat, but in prison, <laughs> especially Columbia, you got the baddest of the bad. These boys know how to fight. I mean, some of these guys are MMA guys. I mean, and they could, they, you, they could go pro in a, in a heartbeat and you got to know who you're dealing with and you got to know and be able to recognize what they've got coming for you, what you got in line. And what happened to me, the worst thing that happened to me in Columbia um, was entirely my fault. It was four months before I was about to be, it, we call it EOS. EOS is the end of sentence. It's the day you're released. I had four months left. And my, 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 my celly, my bunkie, actually, because it was open bay, my bunkie, he slept on the bottom, was wild bill, very substantial very accredited, very respected on the compound. And his two associates were likewise the same, very influential, very influential. And thank goodness, Wild Bill and his associates took a, took a, a liking to me. They found me funny, you know? Um, and Wild Bill, he's, he's the one who gave me, he's, he's an excellent, beautiful artist and hates tattooing. And I was talking to him one day about a tattoo that I wanted. And he goes, I'll do it. I, Bill, I, I, I thought you hate tattooing. He's like, oh, God, I hate it. Oh, I hate it. I don't, I don't do it for anybody. I mean, I just, that sounds like a really good piece. And I want to do it. So he did it. And I mean, I was honored. Charged me $20. It's my entire stomach. 
It's my entire stomach. And he started to charge me $20. He nailed it in two hours. I mean, nailed it and did it freehand because I trusted him. And uh, that was very honorable for me. So I was very comfortable in the dorm that I was in. I was in A2. So for the first six months of my last year, and was spent at the main unit. And uh, he was my monkey. First six months, I, I stayed in the kitchen. Worked seven days a week, every, but the beauty part was once you put in that seven, once you put in those, uh, that six month period in the kitchen, you don't have to go and work in the kitchen ever again. Is the while kitchen you're there. bad? So it was it bad. Kitchen sucks. Kitchen sucks. Oh, kitchen does it? sucks. I was in the, yeah, I was in, I was in the dish pit. I mean, wearing a poncho. And you're banging trays as they're coming in. I mean, and they're coming in because they try to feed the compound fast. And they're coming in. And I spray. You got another cat over here who's lazy. Doesn't want to, you know, he's getting getting stuff backed up. And you got to get, you got to walk around the dish machine and go, look, bro, if you don't pick this up, I'm going to put you through that damn dish machine. Now, I'm not kidding. Get to, get to work, man. You're burying me. So it, it, it's very, very fast paced, very high tension. It wasn't for me but it was forced upon me. So yeah, I was obviously. ineligible uh, for, yeah, for any other um, programs on that camp, which weren't many. Um, I wanted to work in the library. Nope. nope, that was not a possibility. But so I'm four minutes away and it's a Sunday and it's early. And we had a, um, we had early rec. So at 8.30, the doors popped, Wild Bill, and his associates, they go to rec. I go to canteen. I come back around nine um, with $17 worth of, you know, zoom, zooms and wham, whams, and, you know, soups and this and that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had just got a 21 year old black gentleman, um, very young, first time in prison, very gangster mentality. Um, I, I don't know what his problem was, but uh, he'd been plotting. He'd been plotting on me. And uh, he knew that my people weren't there. You know what I mean? And uh, he uh, he approached and he said, hey, man, check it out. Uh, let me ask you something. How much money you get, dog? I said, that's none of your business. And he said, well, man, check me check me out, dog. Uh, you will give me half of that. I <laughs> said, I told him, you have life uh, up. And I was very cocky because I knew I had him in my bag. That guy was that guy was going to get chewed up and spit out. And he does this. It, excuse me? And I got in his face and I said, you got life. And about that time were the three vultures that I didn't see coming um, from the sides. Okay. They're back like friggin' raptors. And that was my fault. I did not take the time to just check my surroundings. I didn't think for a second, and I broke a cardinal rule. Keep your head on a swivel. Don't ever think you have somebody in your bag. And I did. And they uh, they beat, they threw me in between two bunks where it's kind of out of view from the uh, officers and just beat me to the ground. And I don't know who did it, but somebody picked up my locker and these things weigh 45 pounds minus what's in them. And he dropped it right on my head, on my right side, right side of my head. And um, I didn't, I've never been knocked out. I, uh, but, uh, and I, I was still conscious. I could still hear everything, but I went something called white blind. Have you ever heard of this? Yes. Everybody I took, I'm sorry, what? white blind yes. and I said yeah yeah um I couldn't see anything but snow it was all white I mean it looked like I mean it really it looked like that all the time like I mean just that's what it looked like a paper towel white even when my eyes were closed when I was trying to sleep um they continued to kick punch I mean broke broke a couple ribs um they did not split my scalp it's wild. It was a con concussion. Well, um, they we I, I, about ten minutes later, I heard the uh, CO walk up and go, "What the happened to you?" And I'm like, 
I, I can't tell you. I can't see who you are or what you're doing. You know, he's like, oh, oh. God. He gets on the radio, infirmary. They put me on the um the cart, and I the only thing I could feel is like when we went outside the room when the sun hit me, the, I could feel the heat, but the vision was white. So the doctor, I guess doctor, um, he basically um, said that I had some sort of brain hemorrhage. Um, just keep him in the infirmary, and let's see if it uh, swells or if he seizes or anything like that nothing about my vision i'm like doc and i'm probably he's probably standing over here and i'm the doc um i don't um i can't see anything he's like ah don't worry about you bro i was worried that maybe some part of my ocular receptors would have been severed but um no uh that's not what happened thank goodness um but i they didn't send me to lake butler um lake butler is the medical reception center it's also uh, one you will go through as you go up if you have to make a pit stop if they don't have like the time to get you to Northwest reception or because that's the last reception center is Northwest but before that you have Lake Butler Lake Butler has two sections they have the wild the wild west unit which is oh, it's wild west and it's just for transfers and then they have the east unit which is a hospital for some reason they didn't feel the need that I need to be sitting there so um, I stayed in the infirmary for six days and thank goodness, um, an associate of mine, we'll call him Kimberly Spice because that's what we called him and he Kimberly hated Spice. it. Yeah. Kimberly Spice. Yeah. Yeah. We used to write like um, backdoor beauty across the pockets of his shirts and like, cause he always wake up for breakfast. So like, chow, chow, he, oh, oh, and throw a shirt on and not notice. And people would walk by, see us and be like, what's up, baby? You know, he's like, why is everybody hitting on me today? It's just, oh, it's freaking hilarious. He never knew until he like was like, but, uh, who put this on here? Well, you know we did, dummy. You know we did. We just, we, we short sheet you to your bed. We tie your shoes together in knots that are impossible to get out. We put toothpaste under your locker handle. Anything we do, it's always us. Just, <laughs> it's always us. But we, he's a good guy, and he happened to be. Kalen, totally. Kalen did you yes, get visitors? Did you get visitors? Were they were they face to face visitors, or was it behind a, a screen like this? No, it, yeah, you could. Uh, I it was my mom every two weeks. Oh, um, yeah, every so twice a month she'd drive up by herself, back hurting, you know, um, but would visit me every two weeks, and she could only stay about like two hours because. That for some reason in prison, no chair has a back unless you work there. So even our family really, you know, sat on these hard plastic chairs. Um, we weren't allowed anything uh, besides a hug or a kiss. Like if you're married, you can hug and you can kiss your wife, but it can't be passionate. It can't be long held. It can't, you can't hold them like you would. What about you, children? You know, do people bring in children. their children? They do. They do. And, um, you know, they're able to um, hold them, give them a hug. They, ref they, they, a lot of COs will allow them to sit on their, you know, father's lap and, and it's okay, but it's, it's against the rules. You know, the rules are a hug, a kiss at the beginning a hug and a kiss at the end. No Do holding hold hands. hands or no, no, no hands. No, no, ma'am. No holding hands. They think you're passing something. Um, no hands on the table. <laughs> Correct. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> uh, that's very true. And that that is a that is probably the number two. Uh, no, nah, probably number three way that they get that we get contraband in is through like, family how do you members or little pipe phones like go tell everyone there's a couple hundred people here tell them what the phones are and why they're so valuable okay well um when i was in they had the 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 we called them pipes because they they had there was a brand i can't remember the brand it's off brand chinese phone it's called a finger phone and it's literally the size of a finger well, guess why that was the preferred version cell phone to have on the compound? Because you could 
Because it was easily, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very easily. And the whole cough, squ you know, squat three times and cough. If you want to know what's up there, you're going to have to dig in there and find out for yourself because there's guys out there. Nothing. I don't care. Yeah, that yeah they can crazy. hold it in. Yeah. But how do you but call those... on it after it's like in your bodily stuff? Well, you, well, you don't. You take it out. And you remove it. it. Do you like wrap yeah. it in something? Yes, ma'am. Condom or um, oh, condom. generally this is that's yeah, easy to get a person. Correct. Or, um, well, not, not in prison. This comes from the outside in, okay? Right, obviously. And it will, <laughs> it will either be put in a condom or wrapped in, uh, tightly wrapped in uh, plastic wrap, okay? And then taped. And it's not pleasant uh, getting it in. But these are always female to male transactions. So it comes in one way and it goes in one way but there so, have to be officers that just push a blind eye because there's no way you don't know what's going on then <laughs> you would think that we're smooth i mean there are guys they're slicker than mule snot you could be looking right at them and they're committing you know an infraction right in front of your face and, and are, are those women really willing to go to prison for this or jail? They, or both? They, love, they love their men. A hundred percent. I don't they're, love any man that much. I guarantee you. They're called ride or dies. We call them ride or dies because they ride or die. Um, those are the women that are waiting for you um, at the house. Now, some of these women have had permission from their men to go ahead and have a Jody. Uh, a Jody is... Uh, you know, basically a fill in. Yeah, fill in until I get home. But Jody better be out of the house when I get home. I actually um one of the uh one of the biggest unforgiven, A B unforgiven uh ranking officers. He uh he did 17 years and gave his wife permission to have a Jody. And asked the only thing he asked was make sure he is not in my house and he's gone by the time I get home because I want to spend time with you and my two boys and I want to revamp and I want to get my life straight. And unfortunately, she didn't listen. Jody was sitting on the couch when he arrived home. He immediately went to his gun safe, grabbed his 45 and blew his head clean off. He's now doing life. He was out for one day. He was out yeah. for one day. One day. He Dude. made it to the bus. And, um, you know, she, she told him, I've got the kids. I can't pick you up. Um, he's like, nope, baby, don't worry about it. Daddy's coming home. I'm coming home. I'm taking the bus. And the bus station wasn't too long from him. And <laughs> this broke my heart because he had EOS. He finished his 17 while I was there. And then about a month or two later, he's back. What happens to and the I'm, pedophiles in prison? <laughs> what doesn't happen to the pedophiles in prison? We we use them as punching bags or um, if we need to get yeah. some stress off or just, you know, just feel like spitting in somebody's face. Um, yeah, they get it. They get it hard. Um, this, this one. Uh, they get in, it in hard. One that so I don't I was have in, a problem with it. Oh, they gave it hard. I don't have neither did we. Yeah, yeah they, we had uh, on our compound, um, we had Wham. It was created by a guy they call Satan. Okay. And Satan is a young, young, about 24, 25. And he created this organization called Wham. And it's war against molesters. And basically, their job was to make child molesters and sexual offenders lives pure living hell either get them to check in or get them to extort them you know i mean really extort the crap out of them and also keep them in constant fear and i was close i was close friends not with satan but with his first lieutenant and his first lieutenant was a filipino gentleman named bolo and he got the name bolo from um 
I don't know if you've you've seen many martial arts movies or anything. He's the uh, Bolo Young is um uh, he's he used to be a bodybuilding champion in Hong Kong. Um, he was like Mr. Hong Kong ten years in a row. He's in every Van Damme movie ever made. He's always the big Chinese nemesis, the big mm-hmm. fighter. Uh, and he, uh, I'll be, um, <laughs> if he, if Bolo did not look like the Bolo Young, I don't know who did. And we're talking massive. His shoulders, his arms, his forearms were just gin, gin, just gin, gin, ginormous. And he did this by doing uh, 3,000 dips on the dip bar, 4,000 pull-ups. He would do 1,000 push-ups Do they, do they have exercise equipment in, like, like old they did, like playground equipment? What do they, they, they have? They they took they took out the weights, uh, weight bars, uh, anything with discs, anything. Uh, they gave us something. They gave us actually it gracefully gave us some really nice stable set, uh, uh, you know that can't be removed. That um, wow. the weights can't be detached. Nothing can be you know it's all together. But yeah, it gave us an opportunity to get a little bit bigger. But it's not like the old days in prison back in the eighties and the nineties where they were throwing up free weights. And basically feeding these guys massive plates of food and therefore creating just monstrous men that it would take six, seven CEOs to get to the ground. Yeah, so so that's what they were like, guys. Let me let me introduce you again because there's people that left and others that have come back. So this is Kalen, and Kalen is uh, spent three and a half years in Columbia in the annex where Charlie is right now. And Kalen had spent two times in prison. It's it's not really. Kalen didn't commit like a like a murder, so he can talk to us, and it's really not needed. Whatever he did, and I, it's not necessary. What's necessary to know is Kalen's talented, and Kalen is a writer. And I found his blog, and then I had to. Doesn't really give your name at first. You have to kind of go through it and find it. So then I found him. I'm good at research. Found you. And we chatted privately for a couple hours, and then you came on, and I'm very appreciative. And what you're saying is exercise is not like the uh, Burt Reynolds movie, The Longest Yard, anymore. No one's, like, lifting weights and throwing a football. Yeah, no cool hand loop. Uh, yeah, no, no, no free weights. Um stationary weights that are bolted down which is better than nothing um it gave us the ability to uh if you could you know you could squat 400 pounds gave us 400 pounds squat 300 pound bench press um we had uh let's see uh 250 pound curls you could do on a curl bar but they're all affixed you you can't remove you can just set the weights with pins then they're they're wired by cable so um, but so this was a grace roll. Okay, I don't know the what they have at time. Columbia now. Maybe they have the same okay. setup. I highly doubt it because. Are the pedophiles separated? I'm sorry, what? The, the, are the what? Are the pedos separated? Are the what? Uh, se- se- pedophiles. Um, no, they threw them to the wolves. Yeah, yeah, the, pe- yeah, the pedos. We call them chomos. Um. <sighs> Don't ask me where that name came from. It's very odd, Chomos. Uh, it doesn't correlate uh, word-wise with me. I don't. I don't understand it. But that is what we call them, Chomos. And um, no, they'll they'll put them right. <laughs> they'll put them right into Gen Pop, and basically pat them on the back and say, uh, "Have fun," because we're going to make sure you have fun. We're going to make damn sure you have fun, because you deserve to have as much fun as possible. And that's what I was saying about Wham, uh, was that was their job. That's what they did for fun. That's what they did for entertainment was chase down child molesters. Um, one of, one of Satan's big things was he would, um, have Bolo act like he's operating like a rolling camera and just in the middle of the dorm when nobody's listening, you know, he'll stick a fake microphone in front of the guy's face. He's like, so tell me, how does a seven year old taste? You know what I mean? And put him on the spot. We call him putting, putting people on blast. Um, and then Bolo's favorite thing to do was walk up to a child molester and literally, um, just stick a knife to his belly and be like, hi, how you doing? <laughs> My name's Bolo. 
um, what you're going to do is you're going to go to the canteen and you're going to get me everything on this list. And if you don't, I'm going to cut you from going to going to chin. So I'll be seeing you, what, 20 minutes? Yeah? Sound good? Good. Otherwise, check in because he does not play. He um, he was a he was a very violent person and he liked hurting people. He liked hurting people because he liked hurting people. He would, but it's it's going to sound really weird when I say this to people because they don't understand. They they don't understand. But he was a wonderful guy. <laughs> <laughs> Even I can recognize the fact that that you know that. Wait a minute. Okay, so he hurt people because he liked to hurt people. He enjoyed very very much inflicting pain on other people for various reasons. Correct. And he's a he was a really incredibly nice guy. Correct. Yes. Yep. yep. Yeah, everyone has hobbies, Kalen. <laughs> <laughs> well, that happened to be his. That really well, happened. Everyone has a hobby. So are they still are the pedophiles still the lowest of the low? Always. Always and forever. And they shall be and they will be. Um we had a gentleman in uh the dorm when I spent my last year of four at Columbia in the main unit, he was, uh, a grand, he had molested and raped his 12 year old granddaughter. Mm -hmm. They gave him, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Six years, six years, I six years. It's nothing. it's nothing. That is nothing. So he gets out and lo and behold, it's the same thing with Taz, the gentleman who got out, spent one day and came back for first degree murder which really wasn't first degree murder. He, 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 he was insane. I mean, he, and he was enraged, he, you know, he, he found Jody on the couch. <laughs> it, it broke his heart. Okay, he well, Kalen, he warned her. He most assuredly warned her. <laughs> like how more clear can you be? <laughs> exactly. And he's on the couch. I mean, okay. it, but it didn't just, it didn't just, did she not, not that you know this, but did she not tell him dudes coming home? Uh, I, I have no clue that I, I know it after that, um, Taz was, um, a, uh, kind of a changed man. He, he was not as, um, open to communicating to anybody. Yeah. He was probably, he was broken. His heart was, he was just shattered. Okay. okay let's go to this and then I'll yeah. let you go. Okay. But the, uh, I have two questions. One is visitation. How does that work? Can a stranger get on your visitation list? Yep, but you got to put in a form. You have to, um, a stranger can, uh, like, they don't have to be related to you, but they do have to be uh, background checked and cleared. Um, if there's anything on their background checks that may, that would cause suspicion, they will be rejected. What do they you mean by suspicion? Well, if they have been uh, caught trafficking drugs before. Okay. Or if they have drug charges, if if they find out that they, like, in the visitation form that you fill out, the, the portion the convict fills out, if you say, just a friend, and then they f actually find out that you guys are married, red flag, red flag, you know what I mean? You're lying on the sheet. You're up to nefarious deeds. You're You're probably here to int introduce contraband into the facility, which is most likely true. But why are they so concerned when they're the ones, the COs are the ones who are introducing the most contraband into the, into the correctional facility? Literally. Ah. I Does the inmate have to approve the visitor? Could I put myself on Charlie Adelson's list, which I wouldn't because I don't want to spend time with him, but mm -hmm. could I? Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Most definitely. Um, it, it, and he can... He can, it. And he can reject it. Yes, he can. Especially if he knows who you are and your purpose. Um, and if he does, <laughs> yeah, if you, if he does, uh, we like to say, as we like to say in prison, you did, man, you did, you did in the beer. You did. Yep. So we found out one of his cohorts, her name's Catherine Mag Benua. She's mm -hmm. at Lowell. She's at Lowell CI. Mm -hmm. That is and the she main has a little website. A uh, little, uh, think of Tinder. So okay. she has like email or or mail the inmate or something. Okay. Okay. Is, are these allowed or not allowed? The they female? are not. Allowed. 
outside communication with any sort of internet connection besides sec- anything through Securus, which is the um, company that makes the tablets that they have signed a, like a $4.1 billion contract with. Oh, God, uh, I missed it. Yeah, they, uh, we all have, uh, everybody gets a tablet now that they, before they were given out for, like they were making, they were charging us $150 and they're cheap tablets i had to do my um first three no two semesters of college work on these pieces of crap and i had information technology um and within and we were using like this bootleg microsoft software called libre um, yeah and, and i Office. use it i use it it's for um like ubuntu it's for yeah correct and you know what? Office Suite is not that bad at all. I really actually enjoyed Office Suite. It was Libre that, that gave me the problems, especially when it came to the two modules of creating a PowerPoint presentation on these tiny, itty bitty tablets where every time I would try to enter a friggin' circle, uh, the notes column would keep popping up. It took me four hours to make a page because there was just it, the touch sensitivity was was horrible i wrote my professor um a message uh uh, at ashland university they're a judeo-christian college and and i'm i'm they're fully accredited it's not like phoenix university or anything like that where everyone your grades that you shared with me if you want you don't have to oh oh, oh, yeah I'm, I'm, i'm stoked about it because education i was expelled uh the beginning first week of my sophomore year in high school um i went to an alternative school for two years scored straight a's once again smartest kid with down syndrome i mean come on most of the time i played mike tyson's punch out it was a very easy they didn't reform crap so but i get back to the uh to the high school and it was apparent i was not wanted there so i dropped out oh that's what happened our job got married got a good jump on life and then uh, the divorce and then yeah, i had a divorce and it was after that it was it got really rough and that's when i kind of flipped so um but uh the the this opportunity here at graceville when i finally once the once the compound was opened up after almost two and a half years of like complete shutdown COVID. I, yeah covid covid yeah um they opened back up I joined the horticulture class for six months while I was on the waiting list to get into Ashland and I got into Ashland and the beauty part is that all these credits that I'm taking, I'm taking courses that you would take at a normal, um, you know, community college, yeah. the same, same curriculum, uh, the credits transfer, they, I'm not doing anything. So, um, basically I got, so I didn't know if I was going to be able to do it. I did honestly, I didn't know, but I felt myself a fool if I didn't try. Oh, good this, for you. This is free college. So I signed up and for the first four semesters carried a 4.0 and then got an A minus in one of my classes. And uh I'll I'll find that guy one day. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> drop me A minus. So what was your degree? Is it an AA, AS? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing that well. I'm, I'm one class away from getting my AA and just general studies. Just That's a nice, well, yeah. And then um, I'm, deal. yeah. I'm also enrolled in a dual degree program, which allows me to, while I'm attaining my AA, work towards my BA in communications with a minor in sociology and my B, uh, my, my bachelor's of science in organizational leadership and development. So, um, have you thought about going to talk to kids? Someone asked a while back. I don't know if they're still here, but have you thought about that? That is amazing. You mentioned that. Um, it's that's almost kismet, uh, almost fate. That's really weird. Um, uh, my uncle just passed. Uh, my uncle Tom, my eldest, my mother's eldest sister's husband. They were married thirty-five years. This gentleman was a retired lieutenant for the Tampa Police Department. Um, he was also an avid sailor. Um, they when he retired they did a lot of sailing they they sailed around the world they he lived a very full life and he passed at 77. Mm. we laid him to rest um 
last Saturday, actually, at the Davis Island Yacht Club, and had wow. us all. And um, yeah, he was he was he was. If people don't know Davis Island. That's where Derek Jeter lived. Correct, correct. Yeah, that's where my mother grew up. That oh, was really? where. Yeah, right. yeah. I'm a Bay boy. Um, I'm, I, you know, I, I was born in Tampa General, and we have a saying down here: um, Florida native, Florida bred, born by the Bay and saltwater fed. And that's and that's 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 indoctrinated. That's in my heart. That you know, saltwater pumps through these veins. Columbia. Right left me the most landlocked i've ever felt in my life and i fact if i can't smell the ocean air i freak don't but come to tallahassee i don't i won't i don't um in graceville i was still way too far from the water but i could still see seagulls oh okay I relished hearing them yeah even when they were pooping on everything but so, um, mm -hmm. so what are you gonna do so i know you have a job you don't need to tell everybody where you work but what are you gonna do with your degree and tell me about the kids that you want to go speak to students well while i was at the memorial um i asked my aunt missy who was very hesitant because she knows i curse abysmally i mean it's my second language you've done so well thank you i told you it was gonna be a, a, a bit of a it's hard. I do it all the time. It's tough. Yeah, and and like you said, you know, you seem very articulate, and and it it, it seems unnecessary to curse so much. And I I, um, it's not that I don't agree with you. It's just that I prefer to. I like adding. Oh, I do too. I yeah. cuss like a sailor. I'm former military. Oh, and just, I and really enjoy swearing. I enjoy it. I like the the fact that it accents what I'm trying to say. It really puts a mm, nice punctuation into a certain phrase or a sentence. If I'm if I'm being funny and all of a sudden I want to drop it and into into something serious, I can I can move emotion by using a curse word and and you know change the entire feel of a piece piece of piece of writing that I'm doing. Um they're very, you know, they're actually, I mean, people frown upon these words, but they're actually very um, useful. And, well, uh, and they're also very Shakespearean. So that's how I, I feel about it. I agree. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. Which I love British and I love Shakespeare and it's very Shakespearean. So I feel very intelligent. They think I'm dumbing myself down. They just don't read enough to know. And that's that's uh that's my my mother and my stepfather. They're like, you know, you gotta really watch what you say around other people because you know what do they think of you? I'm like, mom, I don't know if you know my reputation already, <laughs> but I don't think it really matters if I curse. <laughs> they are, you know, they already have opinion. So uh, the chil the children, what are you gonna do to help the children stay out? She said, this lady, Mary Lou, who was in the military as well. She was uh, uh, in Vietnam with my oh. uncle and triage, triage nurse. And she came up to me and she's like, listen to me. The speech you made, and it wasn't really a speech. It was just something off the top of my head about yeah. my uncle I mean, how he, good. how he tried to help me during my first bid or try to stay out of my first bid. And, um, I started by saying, this is a room full of cops. I mean, doing taps and I mean, they're full dress, full, full presentation, the whole nine. And I introduced myself. Uh, hi, I am uh, Kaylin Witten. I am um, Missy's and Tom's nephew. And I'm here to represent the opposite side of everybody else in this room. <laughs> and proceeded to tell them the steps and how my uncle Tom was able to um, influence me um, even after I really kind of kind of ran him over and spit in his face after what he tried. But what he told me before I went in was very true. He said, Kalen, this is what you're going to, this is what you're going to deal with. Okay. This is very real and you need to listen to everything I say because this, these things are going to happen. And you got to be ready for him. Well, I'll be damned if he was not right. If he, he may have saved my life for all I know. I don't know, but likely, likely. <laughs> so, what are you going to do for the kids? Like, what do you want to do? Well, she said she suggested that I get in contact with um, the Tampa Police Department, Tom's faction of law enforcement, and get with somebody in PR, and 
basically tell them, you know, hey, listen, um, I think I can help. Um, I think even though I'm old, older, 43, um, I'm still able to communicate with the younger generation. Barely. Uh, it's very hard. Alpha and Y and they're very social media based. They don't their attention spans are that of a net. You have to really hook them immediately to catch their attention. And then you have to keep them hooked. And it's as difficult. I think I'm very able to do that. Um, well, can I say something? So I've watched other podcasters, which really mm -hmm. gave me the idea to do this. Okay. And they had um, former inmates on. And the difference is your language skills. It, it, most of them speak in a way that's very prison-esque, right? So it can be a turnoff for families. It could be a turnoff. That's not how you speak. And no, man. For doing so much time, you 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 kept what I like to call proper English. Like, that's how you speak. I am a... Swear, but I don't hear a prison dialect. Yes, ma'am. Um, that um, that's something that's very important to me. English, um, like the entire, it's it's not a political view. It's not a. Uh, 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 um, I, I'm not saying this is my position on um, uh, transgender or anything like that. Right. But the preferred pronouns issue drives me insane. I mean, you when somebody asks. When somebody, when you're talking to somebody, you go, uh, please, if you could um, refer to me as they. Um, okay, number one, that's not proper English. Number two, you are disrespecting any schizophrenic that is in the, I mean, that, I mean, they are they because they have multiple personalities. Anybody with DID, they are they. There's, there are many parts to them. You are not they. You were either born with one sexual organ or the other, and you prefer to consider yourself the other. Good for you. Don't murder the English language because you think it's keech or you think it's uh, you know this this to me is a is very is very yeah. fat. It's a very I feel I feel it's very fat. I, I um I noticed a lot of uh, children. A lot of kids, teenagers, impressionables are adopting it just because it's broadcast so much in the media and social media and kids want to be accepted. And the big hot button issue is accept this. This is what you're supposed to accept. Transgender, this, that, and the other. Accept, accept, accept. Well, everybody wants to be accepted, but at the same time, everybody wants to be a rebel. So... I think you'd be great for really someone just pointed out at any age group. And mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think it's so much. I mean, I'm talking about rotary clubs, like mm -hmm. and eventually you may or not, but you could make money at this. You really could. That's never something I ever thought of. Like um, I mentioned the book, you know, about my first bid. That's it's three composition books uh, filled. I think I'm at like 390 pages, maybe four at this point. Um, I've always said if I can just get like some independent publisher to, to just bind it for me, um, job well done. Oh, 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 Kaylin, you could do better. You can do it and just make it an ebook and mm. just sell it on Amazon and never have to go to print. And yeah, then I, you're so well I'm, spoken, I'm, you could yeah. read your own book. Oh, uh, I've looked into doing audiobooks, like, yeah. you know, reading. I can also do accents and certain inflections. I could do Irish. I could do an Irish accent if they're in Ireland. And, you know, there's, you know, I mean, I've, I've looked into that. And, um, uh, well, I haven't looked into that. That's something I want to look into uh, doing books on audio. I can't sound like Morgan Freeman, though. As soon as I got my Morgan Freeman voice, it's on. I'm going to be think rich. You do a lot with a very little bit of money, is my point. Yeah, um, I need um, to reach people, and then they pay you to come see, hear them speak. Because look, we've had—I don't even know how many views because I can't see it—but we'll have thousands mm -hmm. of views in the next couple of days, and people mm -hmm. will pay for that because <laughs> it will help them. First, it's perspective of a of a culture we don't see except on whatever TV shows, mm -hmm. and it's going to help someone's child. 
because not a lot of people hear about someone's um, buccal cavity being ripped off. Yeah, that was wild. <laughs> I mean, and I, I mean, I've got I what I've got published on the on the prison journalism project is what they were able to publish. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, my what stops them for publishing? Why do they edit? What are they editing? Could you tell well, us? Yeah, they'll edit um, certain things. Uh, uh, I did a um, I did I did a story I called Shakedown at the Apollo. Right, uh, I read it. Okay, yeah, there was a part in there about this pedophile who was very well known by the COs, even the ones with the dogs who do the the sniffing who come in, and um, there was one that one guy. He was just so funny. I mean, he he. I was laughing and everybody else just sitting straight at me like, what is so funny? Cause this CO is hilarious. Well, there was a section in that story where he just, he started really ripping apart this, this, this uh, child molester calling him proto faggins and all sorts of stuff. I mean, it was really funny. And, um, I guess for some reason that did not, the PJP, PJP felt that was not, um, I don't know, consider it or relevant or, and I gave them full, full, you know, full, full access to edit anything that I wrote, whatever they felt. Um, my community manager, uh, Brooke Lockiato, she was, she was the best, um, you know, and if it would benefit the perspective of a, of a convict actually living the real deal life in prison and getting that out to people, if they had to take a few sentences out, I had no problem with that. That is not an issue for me. You know what? Uh, I mean, well, obviously you're quite humble. Mm -hmm. I've yeah. been through a lot, but I did share those two yeah. articles mm -hmm. and I think they should go to the blog. I think it's a fascinating, like I had no idea this even existed, but it's mm -hmm. not just you. It's independent journalism and mm -hmm. every, you know, the beauty of YouTube is everyone can have a show, even mm -hmm. And everyone can have a voice. And I try to, like everyone who writes and chats with me or I'm keeping my notes, I respond to everybody. Everybody to me needs to be able to be heard. And uh, even if they're rude, I delete them. There was only one rude person in all of this two hours. And I just blocked it because I don't have time for it. But okay. it's, everyone else was just really kind Ooh. and they deserve a response. So if they send, if someone's watching this later, I always respond. But even a YouTube channel is free, dude. It's free. Yeah. See, I've never, I, like I said, I just got out. I'm not familiar with YouTube um, at all. Um, I'm not well, familiar. I will help you. Whatever you need, I will help you. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, if that's the case, then, uh, you know, who's the rude guy and where does he live? Ah, I don't know. Because they use handles. <laughs> People don't use their real names. I'm one of the few that posts their real name on here. Yeah. I was kidding. I'm not. I always look like, can I figure it out? I always wonder, but I use my real name with my real phone number, my real email. Cause it's public. Anyway, I have a real mm. estate agent. It's public. Very cool. So I, I just think, yeah. So if you do decide you have a lot, you have a long time. You've only been out like 10 months, right? 10 months. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. In July. Well, in July, it'll be a year. July 4th. Would you have a place to live? Was that hard to find as a real estate agent? How hard was it? Well, it was, I actually had a piece of property on a, well, I had a one third of an acre with like a single wide trailer that we had, um, that I was living in when I was, you know, picked up, uh, we had gutted it, remodeled it. And, um, even though it was a 1977, um, it was a property that was valuable. And, um, my mom called up, uh, and said, listen, um, what say you? that we sell that property. Okay. Get out from under the mortgage. Um, I'll start saving that cash for you and we'll go ahead and set you up in a, uh, you know, next to the house where they live in a travel trailer. I've lived in a fifth wheel before. I mean, it's not, that luxury is not an issue yet. This thing is nice. <laughs> it looks it. Oh my lord! It's yeah, it's it's pretty um, it's pretty decked out. Uh, vibrating chairs, LED lights everywhere. It's um, I'm a lucky duck. I really Are am. You an only child? No, ma'am. I have a sister. She's eight. She's a CNA. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. And yep. does everyone live in the area? Um, now we do. Yeah. We've lost both grandmothers, both grandfathers. Uh, we had two cousins in Atlanta that were the, or excuse me, Macon. Yeah. That were the only ones who, uh, weren't close. We have, um, my stepfather's brother and his family, and they live a little up North, a uh, little up North from us. And they don't know, they don't know South, I think, but yeah, we're pretty all local. Um, my, uh, my great grandfather and my great grandmother came from Georgia and started the first lumber mill sawmill down here in uh Wyamama. and wow. they were the Ellsberries and they made a their their town their town uh a town staple the Ellsberries. so that is my blood that's my blood um and uh cuz Ruskin used to be small Ruskin used to be all it was was tomato fields and uh packing houses that was it we used to be known as the uh the leading tomato producing you know place in the world and uh that has since dissipated quite I a lot say a florida tomato is horrid oh <laughs> really really well the best tomatoes i'm from pennsylvania so the best tomatoes to me are jersey new jersey tomatoes are just yeah, yeah down here we, yeah we see uh, the, we used to have the best tomatoes i guarantee it but ours are red ours are like red the color of that mantle yep we um we would uh we any we did so many varieties my my stepfather he's always been a uh, foreman on tomato farms or or oh, was he? yeah and um he's also a real dickhead oh uh, uh, he's also a real <laughs> um, piece of work is what i said but uh he was raised hard and uh as as such, he he's came out hard. Uh, but is he still uh, alive? Are we talking about him like he's living? No. Well, I mean, yes, we are. Unfortunately, I mean, uh, yes, fortunately, he's. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, but let me tell you, he's a farmer and he's good. He used to make the biggest beefsteak tomatoes I've ever seen in my life. So much. Yeah, and the cherry tomatoes he made were so. It was a combination of sweet. I don't know how he did it, but strawberries, he was involved with that for a little bit. Uh, cabbage, uh, cucumber, zucchini. Um, and when I didn't have a job, I was always volunteered to come work at the farm because I know, you know, I operate heavy, heavy machinery. I, you know, I, I, I learned how to, I learned how to shoot a gun at, at age four you know we're very so southern I have one last question for you and we're going to do this again if you want it's not entirely up to you of course yeah, no problem. so you have the freedom right um what is mm -hmm. the food what is the food because we're talking food that you miss the most when you were in lockup steak was it okay steak rare blue um maybe 30 seconds on sear uh <laughs> each side and then just put it on the plate I'll take care of the rest. Knife Is and fork. Any food that you had when you were in that you could never eat again? Um, oh, uh, pretty much the entire menu. Uh, they ruined cabbage of all forms. What about ramen? Can you eat a ramen? Uh, that what that see that is what blows people away. Um, they're like, uh, oh, I bet you never eat another ramen again. Stop it. Yeah, I don't. It it. Yeah, they got me. I've been um, indoctrinated. I think that I'm pretty sure they put an addictive chemical in it where now I can't, I can't help it. In fact, I got to eat one now that we started talking about it. Thanks a lot, Patty. That's awesome. <laughs> no, that yeah. is, I can't believe it. I love ramen. I absolutely love them. I do. Um, uh, and, but I came home my first bit and I made my, my family um, a brick. You know, and I even used like, you know, expensive ingredients that we didn't have access to to kind of just um, get their palate adjusted to what they were about to experience. Um, you know, Velveeta cheese squeeze and Doritos and ramen and seasoning packs and a few other accoutrements that I will not mention because that's my recipe and nobody else can have it. And uh, uh, my mom took one bite and Oh no, don't go away. Hear me? Oh, there you, you are. Now I can you hear you. 
Yes, now we can hear you. Okay, yeah. Yeah, she uh, spit it right out and said, that is literally the grossest thing I've ever put in my mouth. Thanks a lot. Like, cool, because I only spent like, you know, an hour and a half breaking up 12 friggin' ramen noodle soups with, you know, so. I can't believe you had an entire pantry basically full of ramen after all those years. Yeah, well, they're cheap. <laughs> well, I know they're cheap, they're cheap but... But so and not at What about the jail? Like I love peanut butter. So we were reading the menu. What was the jail mm -hmm. peanut butter like? Um, they would mix it with. Um, it's funny because the peanut it's butter actually is produced, is produced in Tampa. They um they buy their peanut butter from a, a peanut butter production plant that is uh in near Ybor City, and it's great. But then they mix it with this jelly that I don't know what it constitutes is flavor like or like a gel is it jelly I, like grape jelly i think it's toothpaste honestly uh a lot of people disagree with me i don't know but what nobody knows except for the kitchen people and i worked there i worked in the kitchen for like um for two years even with covid that's what i did um as a as a an 11 member team cooking for 2500 inmates there are only three of us in the dish pit it was abysmal it was really really rough because you know i tested asymptomatic and they were like oh well you're still working in the kitchen I'm like <laughs> you're not being in jail with a peanut allergy someone's asking okay um like that will fall under the category of like um you minute you um religious diet okay mm -hmm. how the jewish people get peanut butter and cabbage and mm -hmm. well like once a week they'll get cherry tomatoes um and then they alternate that peanut butter with um sardines packs of sardines i read that i like <laughs> sardines but with mustard I love sardines. yeah they actually you know that's that's it's not bad but when you're on you know, like year seven of eating peanut butter and sardines because there's certain things since they're kosher you are not permitted to buy on canteen and if they look through you know okay you're kosher and we're going to look through your past purchases of of things you bought through canteen and it's not culture guess what you're getting a tray and yeah that was what that that was what they were trying Charlie to is not kosher they made a they ruined a wedding over it so he's definitely not kosher we know all of charlie's life okay that's like, us this podcast mm -hmm. thousands of other podcasts are obsessed with these adelsons because they're so twisted um we haven't gotten the story down here i'm sure we, we we've touched on it but if it's not local yeah it's uh, not it's a, it's a broward miami thing and a tallahassee thing and then okay. whoever loves true crime so it's a lot of it's true crime okay. i lost you again wherever you are in your house house is uh, made out of bulletproof kevlar it's atomic bomb proof um also so um feel free to it's shoot at if you want but um, no, it's too nice. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah, well, I'm gonna, we're gonna go. It's like two hours and fifteen minutes. It doesn't even feel like it. I try to hold people for two hours, and this is amazing. Yeah, um, more. I'd be more than happy to do this again with you, Miss Miss Wilson. Um, I'm gonna think of some more questions because I want to. Honey, I got plenty to tell. I'll tell you that. I'll try to figure out in my mind how to curb them properly to where I can get them out to your audience in accordance with the you did rule. fantastic you really did i'm not blowing smoke i don't do that but good I, I mean it was so fast i'm looking he, up and i'm like god it's two hours and 15 minutes yeah there's so much uh there's so much that people don't know about the uh, the florida prison system um i hear uh from i've only experienced the florida prison system uh but a lot of people will come down from northern states and get arrested and then you know spend time in florida prison and they tell me that florida prison you know oh man this is cake this is this is this is candy camp this is a you know retirement home yeah you should try you should try you know well and they're not lying like louisiana you know the, the Ang angola louisiana um, just got rid of like road whatever that is basically slaves right the road workers oh they, yeah the, road, the chain gang the chain yeah, gang yeah chain gang, that's the word same yeah. Thing. See, and that's the thing. That's a, that's a, it's another the terminology alone, prison slang, prison talk. It, I mean, 
that's another two hours if you want to talk about that because it's, well. it's, it's another language um it's another you know the fact that I, I i chose not to adopt it especially on the outside because it makes you sound dumber than mm. makes you sound ignorant anyway um but on the inside it also earned me a lot of respect like to walk up to somebody and be like, um, listen, I don't want to start a, a, a bad precedent with you, sir. So let's go ahead and be amicable about the situation and acquiesce to each other because you're my bunkie and I'm your bunkie and then go, uh, because I don't know what you just said. I'm just going to say, okay. I'm like that works. Perfect. Excellent. Great. I win. You lose. And, um, if they deny, you know, that you agreed that we were going to be civil and you didn't know it and you decided to be uncivil that gives me the right to beat you into a corner and <laughs> literally i mean i used it to my advantage i mean and then man that's not what you said at all well sir that's exactly what i said and you were just too poor poor you ignorant to recognize words which I love. I love words. I love words. You can tell. Yeah. Don't thank have you, Kaylin, to... so much. Everyone is like, thank you, thank you. You're very, Kaylin, very awesome. Kaylin's doing fantastic. You were so easy to listen to. So if you ever want a YouTube account, I'll show you how to do it. If you're, I don't know what the rules are for your probation, but yeah, that's that's a that I gotta figure that out. Most yeah, figure that out with, with your probation officer. I don't want you to get in trouble for this. So she is such a but she will she will bury me she's very very sweet but she's had she smiled right in my face and said listen you just don't lie like because if you do i'm gonna put you in prison and i'm like yes ma'am no problem no problem thank you no very one much wants that. certainly no one wants that here yep and so, so thank you so much kaylin but if you need help uh people who to edit to do whatever you proofreading not that you need it because it doesn't look like it let me I, know yeah, I've I've edited edited that particular story twice now. It still it still needs polishing and, and um any help that maybe you could uh you know any pointers that are in the right direction, I ain't it. Yeah, that's what I'm talking I'm about. The right direction. Thank you. Yeah, let I me know talk. people. I know that, people. That would be wonderful because I would that would that would just bring a lot of joy to my heart to actually have that done and finished. But like I said, I, I've got about two weeks worth of the actual time to write about, which well, should maybe not now you'll think about it. If we can find someone to edit for you, maybe that'll be, maybe yeah. that'll be something to move forward to. Okay. Certainly, that would be very much motivation to finish it. Well, thank you. I yeah. mean, fabulous. Thank you so much. I, I'm going to message you on Facebook in the morning. Um, I want to send okay. you a thank you. Okay. Thank you, Patty. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay. And thank you. Someone sent me um, a super sticker. So I'm going to make sure that Kalen gets that. Mm -hmm. And thank you so very much. Thank you, Chris. You're very welcome. Uh, I highly enjoyed it. And I just, you know, I hope I was informative enough and uh, that people, oh, yeah. you know, uh, got an idea. Got an idea. Where so. really are. We'll, we'll talk soon. Okay. Thanks, yes, Kalen. Okay. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.